she can we tell women's stories we lead by example we interview women from all walks of life and all over the world to hear their journey how they got to where they are today and i'm really excited to talk to dr greta pretoni today greta welcome to she can you're the Thank ceo you. and co-founder of minerva you're a neuro engineer you did your phd at the eth in zurich you're also on the board of management directors at Pretoni. Tony Real Estate, you're Forbes 30 under 30, you're a woman of the future ESG, and you have a passion and have dedicated your life at the forefront of research, applying cutting edge research to real world problems. So you develop and produce groundbreaking devices for the treatment of diabetic neuropathy, uh, a chronic and debilitating condition that affects millions of people. It obviously improves their quality of life. Tell us a little bit more about your journey and how you got to this place where you're really pushing research and you're at the forefront of neuroengineering, changing people's lives. Absolutely, with pleasure. Well, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me. It's an honor to be here and to be able to share my story. Um, my story started in a... Uh, back in 2019, I moved here in Zurich to do a PhD uh, in your engineering, as you correctly said. And uh, I did this because at the time uh, I wanted to expand my knowledge about uh, the research part and really focus the roots of my entrepreneurial passion into science. So uh, at that time, a PhD seemed like the most obvious way to go. And I'm very happy I chose that path because uh, it brought me to where I'm here today. And the journey was uh, a lot of ups and downs, uh, but uh, mostly ups, uh, developing the device, uh, you know, having the idea, finding fine-tuning the idea, really understanding the patient needs uh, and developing this device, uh, which I'm sure we're going to have the opportunity to talk about a bit more later, uh, but that is able to use uh, artificial intelligence and neurostimulation to artificially restore the sense of touch and decrease pain in patients suffering uh, from diabetic neuropathy. Um, I really loved the journey, uh, but I must say that uh, I came from a very entrepreneurial uh, and business-oriented family, which I think is where I got the roots and the passion for uh, the entrepreneurial part that's within me. But I never really wanted to pursue the entrepreneurial path in the real estate field, which is where actually my family is focused on. Because since I was a little kid, I was uh, super interested about the science and specifically about the brain and how our senses work. And so growing up, I've decided to uh, combine these things together, my passion for science together with uh, uh, my entrepreneurial passion. Greta, which is so inspiring and impressive. So tell us more about this device and where you at in the development journey. So today we're not on the market yet, but we do have fully functional prototypes which have been uh, tested in clinical trials uh, showing the uh, fantastic outcomes. And uh, the, the idea is that uh, we need to still get the certification to be able to sell this device because it's a medical device. And usually for medical devices, the path is a little bit longer and a little bit more expensive. That's okay because it means we're doing things in a rigorous way and this is exactly what we want to provide to our future clients. Something that's scientifically based, safe and effective. So our path sees uh, the pursuit of the certification next year and the penetration uh, uh, of the US market after that and then the expansion into Europe. The device basically looks like a sock. So we call it a smart sock. You basically use it instead of your everyday life socks. Um, but what we have integrated within this sock are pressure sensors under the sock that are able to capture the pressure-related information while the patient is walking. And this information gets into a control unit that is placed on the calf. And this information 
through artificial intelligence gets translated into stimulation parameters that are delivered non-invasively through electrode printed inside of the sock. The benefits of the device are twofold. On one side, it can artificially restore the sense of touch, which means improve how the patient is walking, improving balance and preventing falls. And on the other side, decreasing chronic pain. Greta, so tell us more about your main motivator. How, how, how did you become interested in this particular chronic illness and uh, think, I have solutions for this, I'm going to go for it. And, and tell us also more about your journey of how did you finance this journey to get a product that's basically ready for market? Absolutely. So regarding my motivation, it really started when I was a small kid because I still remember talking for hours and hours to my brother regarding phantom limbs, which are these phenomena that um, it's this phenomenon that happens in amputees where even though they don't have a limb anymore, they still feel it. They feel they can move it. And for me, this was absolutely fascinating. I remember reading Ramachandran's book and going completely nuts over them. And I thought, how, you know, how can our brain trick our senses so much as to let us perceive that we still have a limb while we actually don't? So I started reading a bit of books uh, while I was smaller. That was really a passion at the moment, nothing more than that. But as I started doing university, I started focusing my path of studies uh, towards uh, neuroscience, neuroscience and understanding the connection between the brain and the body, which has always really fascinated me incredibly. And um, I started working actually with amputees because that's where actually my big passion was. And we initially developed this device that was able to artificially restore the sense of touch in amputees to make sure that they were able to walk better with their prosthesis. I've always focused more on the lower limbs rather than on the upper limbs. Then while I was doing my research, I understood that there was a much bigger need in the market of uh, this actually, this device. And this is where I came in contact with the knowledge that 50% of patients with diabetes, which today are more than half a billion in the world, develop neuropathy. And this neuropathy causes exactly the loss of sensation and chronic pain. Mm -hmm. So this is how we started to modify a bit the device to be able to use it also with this population. And, uh, and yes, yeah, since then, it's been a lot of successes. So I'm, I'm very happy that I decided to pursue my childhood dreams. And uh, regarding the financing part, uh, initially, while I was doing my PhD, uh, the research was financed through grants and awards, so non-dilutive funding. Uh, recently, in uh, September 2023, we entered the VSA Zurich Translational Center, which is this joint accelerator between ETH and the University of Zurich, which has funded us uh, for the next uh, uh, at least three years, uh, possibly even more, depending on our runway at the moment. It looks like a little bit more, but you know how it is in startups. The more you grow, your costs also uh, get higher and higher. Um, but anyways, let's say that for the next three years, we're good. This is dilutive money. Uh, so they enter in our cap table. And uh, in the future, we will next need to do at least a couple of more financing rounds, uh, a seed and series A, uh, which uh, potentially will be in the US because that's our strategic market. Uh, so we want to make sure that our presence is rooted for sure within Switzerland because it's where we're based, where we have our headquarters and our team. And um, yeah, it's where, you know, our heart lies, but also in the US because it's where we feel that uh, people need it the most. Yeah, the biggest market. Yeah. Greta, so what do you feel are your top qualities that you bring to the table to, first of all, pursue a career in neuroengineering, which is not something that is sort of typical? Uh, what is it like to be a woman in this industry? And what qualities do you feel you always had? You know, if we're talking about young girls listening to this conversation and they feel I'm interested in the STEM subjects, what do you feel you always had that really serves you now? Look, like, I think what I've always had is uh, I was always underqualified for what I wanted to do. 
<laughs> so I always wanted to go a step forward and a step higher, no matter if I had the qualities that I needed to pursue that path. You know, when I started my PhD in neuroengineering, um, I had my studies done in psychology and neuroscience. Mm. I applied to one of the top leading engineering universities in the world without being an engineer. So for me, this idea of uh, uh, going always, you know, a step forward, uh, uh, that's always something that drives you towards your passion is super important to build your career, never to specialize in something super specific and say, I know I've never studied this. I cannot get into that specific field because I'm not an engineer. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not this and whatsoever. If you're passionate about it, you will find a way to make it happen. So this is one uh, uh, a bit out of the box quality that I think I had. Other qualities that I think I have is that I'm a very open person. So my roots, I'm half Italian, and half Icelandic. But I think that when it comes to people and networking, uh, my Italian parts comes out quite a lot because mm-hmm. I love speaking to new people uh, and uh, network events. Uh, even if I'm completely alone, I still remember when I was 18 years old, I asked my parents to uh, give me as a present a trip to the U.S. because there was a conference of brain-computer interfaces. And I went there completely alone with no affiliations because I want to explore the world. And I think curiosity is at the roots of growing yourself as a person because to decide also what you want to do in your life, you can't just base this on textbooks or other experiences. You need to feel it you know, on your skin and decide if this is something that really works for you or not. So being open, being curious, uh, you know, at the risk of sometimes uh, uh, looking silly or making, uh, you know, questions that maybe sometimes uh, are completely out of the blue. I don't mind. I prefer that, you know, I prefer to pursue what I think is right for me and not care too much about what other people think. Which takes us to the next question. Give us some top tips for women of all ages, but particularly young women that feel, I have a theory, I'm onto something, I feel uh, I need to jump and start this, whatever it may be. My biggest advice would be do it. Meaning it seems uh, cliche to say it, but what I usually always say for myself and my story is uh, pursue fear pursue the path that scares you the most. I hear often a lot of people, young entrepreneurs, uh, wanting to, you know, pursue the entrepreneurial path, uh, but not being uh, completely sure about this because anyways, it's a big leap. It's a risk. You need to leave a lot behind uh, and go towards uncertainty. That's fantastic. Do it. But make sure that you're 100% in it because if you keep another door open, that's where it's probably not going to go because you need to have skin in the game. You need to make sure that you take that decision and you pursue that path. Maybe things will go wrong and it's almost certain that things will go wrong, but it's fine. You're going to learn from it. And the next time you're going to apply what you have learned to your next venture and it's completely fine, but make sure that you pursue fear and that you're 100% in it. Greta. And what are you most proud of to date? You've had so many accolades already at such a young age you've you've started a company out of nowhere uh, out of university that is at the forefront of uh, technology what are you most proud of i think what i'm most proud of is my stubbornness (laughs) um there have been a lot of moments where you know, it was very difficult to pursue this path, both for uh, pressures on the personal side, you know, your family uh, that either wants you to go in the family business uh, or, uh, you know, even your love life because you have to change a country, you have to be alone in a completely new country where you don't know anybody. But I'm really proud of myself for sticking to what I want wanted to do because it's repaying you know the hard uh, uh, moments that I've gone through and uh, 
when I see the device uh, being uh, used by the patients and uh, having sometimes, you know, emails from them uh, thanking us uh, of the work that we're doing, that they're proud of us. Uh, I mean, for me, that's just uh, insanely beautiful. Yeah, amazing. What a contribution. So what are the plans and dreams and goals for the next years? Well, sure. Short term would be for sure starting to have this device available on the market and being able to provide this improved quality of life to millions of people rather than just the few people that were able to help with the testings here in the uh, in Zurich where we're based. After that, it would really be to provide uh, and the vision for my nerve is also to provide more digital solutions. We're already able to collect a lot of data. So this means that we can drive uh, uh, and guide our path towards digital therapies and uh, tailor each specific therapy to every patient's need. And this is what has been interesting me already since I started studying psychology and understanding that each one of us is different. So my big dream is to combine the use of artificial intelligence and big data that we're able to collect to make sure that each single person is treated in their own specific way, in a holistic way that captures both their subjectivity, but also their uh, dreams for the future which comprises both the physical but also the mental health. And uh, given the fact that we have both a hardware and a software solution, we're really be, we will be able to provide this. Yeah, amazing. Greta, so what is it like being a woman in this industry? So I've been asked this question uh, some other times. And I have to say that I don't know if it's because of my personality, but For me, it has always been, it has never been an issue. So I've never had, uh, um, you know, uh, pushbacks. Uh, and I think that stands also uh, exactly as I said in my personality. You know, I tend to just go forward, not care too much about what other people think. And on the other side, look at uh, people that support us and also see people who don't support us, why they don't support us. But I've never had uh, the feeling that being a, a woman for me was a, a, a pushback or yeah, something uh, negative. On the contrary, I've, uh, you know, now I've set up my team. We're nine people and seven of us are women. So that's fantastic. We're a lot of women and uh, For me, it, it's really fantastic to see a lot of young women being interested in science and in startups and in innovation and in technology. And I want to uh, really, you know, go with the flow of this, uh, uh, this uh, passion. But uh, I don't see big differences between men and women. I see a lot of differences between people who are passionate about the, what they do and uh, people who are not. So for me, anybody who's passionate and wants to join us, uh, our door is always open. Greta, I think that's a beautiful end to this conversation. How inspiring. Thank you for being such an incredible role model. And uh, I can't wait to hear more, see the product on the market and hear more about all the amazing things you're going to create in the future. Thank you, Stephanie.